So Adrian Boyer, welcome. Hello. Uh, can you uh, perhaps tell me shortly what it is you do? Okay, I, I'm a teacher at a university, University of Bath, and my principal activity is working on a project called the RepRap project, and that's a 3D printer that prints itself. Okay, so 3D printing, we're hearing a lot about it, but what is it ex exactly? What can we do with it? Well, at the moment it mainly builds objects made out of plastic. So you have a machine, you plug it into a computer, and you can print virtually any plastic object out with it. So if you want to make a new cat flap for your cats coming in and out of the house, you can print that. You want to make a model of a surgical uh, procedure, you know, the, the solid bits that have got to be cut away, you can print that, the surgeon can practice on that. Any three-dimensional object of a reasonable size, made of plastic, you can do. I can see it as being very useful in a commercial environment, in shops or perhaps in the medical world. But how will it be useful for consumers, for the regular consumer like me? Okay, well, uh, in our house we never go to a hardware store. Uh, we can print out door handles, we can print out coat hooks, we can print out uh, little objects to hold the TV remote, anything we want, spare parts for the car, as long as they're not parts of the engine which need something stronger than plastic. Um, you'd be amazed how many things that you need, which it's so much easier to go and print in 20 minutes than to spend half an hour driving to the shop and back. True, but how expensive is it for me to print my own door handle? Oh, much cheaper than printing out. Uh, printing your own door handle would cost two or three cents, that's all. So that sounds like a really disruptive model. Yes, I think it probably is. In particular, when we get beyond just plastic, because the machines are moving towards working with other materials. Uh, for example, there's a guy who's taken the rep wrap machine and made it work with uh, clay, ceramics, so he can make pots and, and, uh, and teacups and things. Really interesting with that, though, is once you're working with clays, you can work at high temperatures. So you can make a mold for metal objects and then start making things out of metal. True. OK, so but, but why aren't we using it then? Well, because it's only just come down in price to the point where people can afford them. Uh, the RepRap project actually started that. We made our machine uh, first in, uh, it, the first working one was in 2007. And before that, to buy a 3D printer would have cost minimum 20,000 euros. You can put a rep wrap machine together for 400 euros. So that's the same cost as a PC. And so now it's just coming to the point where people can own them for themselves. Because you're just, just saying 400 euros. Yes. That's not much. We're all buying tablets. That's, that's like the same price. So my question again is why aren't we using it yet? Well, because it's only just come along. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but the same goes for the tablet, it, it only just come along. Yeah, yeah, but of course. Uh, the 3D printing uh, world, as far as personal uh, use is concerned, is at the point that computers were in about 1979, 1981. In 1979, uh, I wanted a computer. In order to get one, I had to solder the chips together myself. And the 3D printing world is a bit like that at the moment. If you want a machine at low cost, you have to be a geek and put it together yourself. Um, but of course, we all know what happened. Uh, ten years later, we could all go to the store and buy one. Except with the rep wrap machine, you don't need to do that. Because the rep wrap machine prints not only the coat, coat hooks that I mentioned and the surgical models and all those things, it prints itself. So you get a kit of parts for another machine out of your machine. So if you've got one, you can make another one and give it to me. That sounds quite interesting. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, that, that's the end of the store. So um, it's really, really disruptive. And yes. which businesses should be on the lookout? Uh, the businesses that make things. What do you predict for in 10 years? A lot of bit businesses are going out. out. I, I suspect so. And of course, people will find new ways to make money with the technology. That's the way human beings always work. Um, when the computer was first introduced, nobody anticipated Twitter and Facebook and so on. They all thought that people would use it for doing their accounts. Uh, that's the very, very small use these days. Um, and the same will be the case with this technology. We don't know where it's going to go. And when I said that people who make things are going to have to watch out, of course, it'll be people who make small things, first of all, like casings for microphones, for example. Nobody's going to be able to make an entire ship with this soon, though ultimately it will come. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. It's okay. Glad to talk.